Netgear just sent us their cool new Nighthawk M6 mobile router. And the biggest question I have that you probably do too is when would you use this router over a traditional router system like my Orbi mesh Wi-Fi system? Having a 5G enabled Wi-Fi router does actually have some pretty interesting use cases. So I'm gonna walk you through what some of those use cases are, what you can generally expect from the Nighthawk M6 and how it compares to a more traditional Wi-Fi router setup. First, let's just generally take a look at what's new with the M6. This is a battery operated Wi-Fi hotspot that supports Wi-Fi 6. It has 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz bands, but to preserve battery, only the five gigahertz is turned on by default. The Nighthawk M6 is designed to work with 5G networks, which can get you a max download speed of 2.5 gigabits per second. This device is an unlocked cellular device, so you can just choose whichever carrier that you want to go with and purchase a nano SIM card from them to use with this device. You put the nano SIM card in the slot located in the battery compartment. Then you place the battery in, close the case, and hold the power button to start up the router. Now, unlike a lot of modern routers, this one actually comes with its own LCD screen that walks you through the setup. There's no app you're required to download, which is actually kind of unexpected and nice. And one feature of having an LCD screen I really like on this router is if you click the QR code icon, it'll generate a QR code people can scan with their phones to automatically join the Wi-Fi network. You can charge the router through the USB-C port on the side, and you can also hardwire it through an ethernet connection as well, and just use it as a regular router that isn't pulling data from a cellular network. And if you do that though, you you will want to make sure that you go into the router's power settings and adjust which power mode it's set to. For use at home, change to performance if the battery is inserted or remove the battery and keep it plugged in to automatically switch to the best performance and range mode. The max range for this router is 2000 feet and you can have a max of 32 devices on the network simultaneously. When being powered by the battery, you have two options, best battery and best performance. And if you want the fastest speeds you can get with this router, definitely switch it to the best performance mode if you have the battery inserted or the best performance and range mode when the battery is not inserted and you have the router plugged in. The speeds are significantly better in my experience. Speaking of battery life, it's rated for 13 hours. And if you plan to use this router somewhere where power isn't easily available, you can purchase more batteries for it and just swap out the batteries at will. That's a key difference for why you would need a device like the M6 versus just using your phone as a mobile hotspot because once your phone battery dies, it's, it's dead. You can't swap out the battery on your phone for most phones nowadays. So that's a little bit about the router, what you can expect from it. Now, let me take you through some scenarios where I think this router makes sense over a more traditional home network or mesh router. And the first and most most obvious one is when you go camping, glamping, and you, for whatever reason, want Wi-Fi. This would also be perfect if you're working remotely from something like an RV or just constantly on the go driving around the country. Another scenario I think this router would definitely be useful for is if you travel a lot and spend a lot of time in hotels, especially luxury hotels. I just got back from a trip, was in a luxury hotel for a wedding, and the room, you know, it already costs like an arm and a leg, and then the Wi-Fi sucks. They have better Wi-Fi, you just have to pay more for it. If you have this router, you can just connect to a 5G network, create your own mobile Wi-Fi, and then basically be like, screw you, hotel. You're not getting another dime from me. The last scenario where I think this router could work for some out there is a home router where you have decent cell coverage and speeds over 5G, but you don't have good fiber or broadband internet. You could probably get an unlimited or another decent data plan that's pretty cost comparable to broadband internet service or fiber service, at least here in the US, we pay a lot for internet, but get less speeds than a lot of other countries out there. Other than those scenarios, I think for home internet, you're still generally better off going with a mesh Wi-Fi network solution, like the Netgear Orbi Wi-Fi router system I currently am using right now. You'll get more range and a stronger area coverage out of those systems and can easily add over a hundred devices simultaneously on the network, which if you're really into tech like me or you just happen to have a lot of devices that need to connect to Wi-Fi, 
you're likely going to need this. Also, the M6 doesn't come with the latest Wi-Fi 6E standard, so if you want to get the latest and greatest Wi-Fi standard, you want to go with the Nighthawk Wi-Fi 6E router or the Orbi 6E system, which we've done a few videos on, and I'll leave those in the description and comments below if you want to learn more about those systems. Though you are able to plug in the Netgear M6 router into one of the other two routers I mentioned and have it serve as a 5G backhaul. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I've left purchase links in the comments as well as in the description and in this video for you to be able to check the current price of this device. Hit that thumbs up button if you like this video, you found it helpful, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and if you're looking for what to watch next, check out some of our other router reviews and you can get to those reviews by clicking on the playlist to the right. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.